So um, please give your professor a big hand. <laughs>
of um, straight up to who's just in here. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. All right. So here's the last one. And in this, I want you to think about what your conflict ma management style is. So the last one is the speaker upper. This is an assertive conflict manager. Someone who is very comfortable with confrontation because they see it as a healthy part of life. Someone who is will will confront issues in a in a, a way that is not mean or denigrating to another person. They're open. They can kind of take a look at themselves. So talk to someone next to you and what's a benefit? What's a benefit of being an assertive conflict manager? Okay, I'm going to have you come back to me just for the sake of time. Having you come back to me. Okay, what's a benefit of somebody who speaks up and is owns their owns their business? Benefits. Come on. I, what's the benefit? No, oh, because they're open. Okay, anything else? They That's can, all. They can get their point across if they oh. are understandable. Okay, they get their point across, they're understandable. So I want you to think about what kind of conflict manager you are, because guess what? The type of conflict manager you are, that kind of default that you go back to, it has a direct relationship on your success in college. I know that might come as a surprise to you, right? might come as a big surprise, and I'll explain it in just a second. But as you're thinking about college, I know probably thinking about lots of things, $1,500 books, the ones that you're going to get you know, 2.3 cents for when you sell them back. <laughs> I think we're not next to the bookstore anymore, right? <laughs> Further away. You're thinking about the social scene. You're thinking about the campus grounds. You're thinking about what food options are available. But there are two things that you're not thinking about. And I'm here to tell you today that those two things can have the biggest impact on your success in college. And you know what? They're not things. They're people. Yourself and your college professor. Your relationship with your college professor, you have to manage it nearly every single day or every time you're in class with them or when you're doing work for them. And so what I want to do is I want to help you identify three ways that you can use communication strategies to improve your communication with your college professor. You know, when you're in college, it's a lot different than high school, as many of you know, may know, but you're the primary driver of your education. You're the primary driver of your academic goals, and your professors are members of Team U. But the way that that has to go down is that you have to figure out how you are going to communicate with your professors to be effective in an assertive and professional way. So think about it. If you are, let's say, a putter-upper, you're the type of person that's probably going to just sit in class, and if you have a problem, you may not sit Say anything, you may not ever let the professor know that there's a problem, and you're going to just sit there and just see, and you might even make little voodoo dolls of the professor, their family, their minivan, their cat, right? <laughs> or, or maybe you are a sneaker upper. You get pissed at your professor, man, you're telling everybody on campus, you're Facebooking it, you're doing it all, right? You're telling everybody, but you'll never tell your professor who's the person that you actually need to work it out with. And let's say you're a blower upper. You are going to send that hate email to your professor. And you know what else you're going to do? And this will lead us to our first, to my first tip that I have for you. You're going to use a lot of you language. You are going to use a lot of you language. Your lecture was boring. You didn't give me a very good grade. You're just being unfair. So what the way you turn that around is by using I language. Now, I want, what I want you to do is a quick experiment. I want you to turn the per, to the person next to you, and I want one of you to make a you statement. And I don't want the other per, it could be anything from, you didn't call me last night, or you never do the dishes, anything. But the other person who's listening, I want you to not respond, but I want you to make a physical action with your body that shows how you feel or what you want to do when that person is saying that, okay? Some people are like this, or some people go like this. Whatever it is for you, just feel it and then see what you do. All right, ready? One, two, three, go. Somebody make a you statement to your person and then the other person make a physical reaction. <laughs>
right? You feel like you want to go like this, or as my eight-year-old says, you put your stop sign up. When someone doesn't like what they're doing, you put your stop sign up. So what I want, but you know, you is a steady diet of language among college students. Again, you know, you didn't tell me that my assignment went well, or your lecture was boring. And let me just qualify that replacing the I, you know, you know, in the way where you say, well, I'll use an I. I think you suck. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. Okay, so tell me, if we were replacing you, because you is blame, right? Blame, you did it wrong. But if we replace that with I, would it sound, what would it sound like? Instead of saying, you, you, you explained that assignment in a really confusing way. Professor, what would tell me what the I statement would look like? I didn't understand that we explained it. Okay, all right. What about you know, you 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 didn't tell me that I missed assignment number three. <laughs> well, what, what don't you say? You're, what are what's the feeling underneath your 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 Surprise. brain is missing? Surprised. You're surprised. I didn't realize, yeah. Okay, so tell me, tell me more. I didn't realize that I uh, didn't have this turned in. My whole body just feels better hearing that. <laughs> I mean, right? Isn't it just such a different way to go? When you start off with a you, nobody wants to give you a big hug and say thank you. And your professor is the exact same way. So that is tip number one, to try to rephrase issues that you have with an I. I'm, cons I'm concerned, I looked at my grades and I noticed that I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a grade for assignment number three. Can you take a look for me? I, you know, I, I, I'm trying to do well in this class. I'm, I'm having trouble connecting to the material. Can you help me? So coming at it, and even if you're furious, S, you know, to de-escalate and use I language. All right, let's move on to tip number two. Now we're talking about when you're in your relationship with your professor, right? Now let's dial back to the first day. You have a right to know who your professor is before you meet that person, okay? So I'm gonna give you a couple of first day tips. I'm not saying go stalk them at their house <laughs> or, be, or become a, an online stalker. What I'm saying that you need to, that you can do, go to their office, send them an email, and use your I language and use your, you know, be, be connect, connect with that person. It'll make you feel a lot better, and it will. If you have to deal with an issue later, you kind of already have connected and know each other. So you say, hi, I'm Ellen. I, I'm going to be in your class. And this is before class starts. I'm going to be in your class this quarter. I would like to, I, do you have a copy of the syllabus? I'd like to take a look and, and get a head start. Now your professor may not have a copy of the syllabus. Ask them for one from next from last term. Things don't usually change that much, and if they do, or sometimes they do, but you'll find that on about that on the first day. But it's a really nice way to make a connection. And again, it could make you feel a little bit better about going into that person's class particularly if you had heard some things about them. Okay, so the final tip that I have for you today is once you're in your class, it's the very first day, you are, you've just received your syllabus, the professor's going through the syllabus, and you've got a lot on your mind that day because it's the very first day of school. One thing that you probably only have on your mind for a moment but may not deal with is the grade that you are looking for. You might be looking for a 4.0 because you have to keep your scholarship. You might be looking for a 3.5 because you need that to transfer into your next program. You may need a 2.5 because, frankly, you don't think you're going to be able to stand this class and you're happy with whatever you're going to get. Well, guess what? When someone is evaluating you and there is something at stake, you need to have a conversation with that person early about what that goal is. So I am going to tell you that on the first day, I want you to use your I language. And I want you to go to that professor after class, make an appointment with, their, with them in their office, send them an email, whatever. <coughs> Hi, my name is Ellen. I have a, I have a goal here. I, I appreciated you going through the syllabus and our assignments. I need a 4.0. What can I do? Can you give me any extra advice of what I can do? I know for my students, I tell them, work on these things early, send, to, send them to me, I give them a date, I'll review them for you, and then we will have a feedback loop going. But if you do not let your professor know early what your grade goal is, because here's the, here's the opposite side of that. The opposite side of that is that, you know, and I'm gonna tell you in 13 years, maybe 10, less than 10% of students actually tell what their grade goals are. But here's what happens the other 90% of the time. Week eight hits, and suddenly, you know, student one has finally paid attention to their grades, and they're like, oh, oh, oh crap, <laughs> yikes, what can I do? Well, we're at week eight. 
or a student who thought that they were doing pretty, things were going pretty well, they have, one, they have one bad exam, and then that exam is worth twice what the other assignments were. Now, so much pressure is riding on the rest of that work. What do I do? And you're at midterm. Still, you can still pick up some pieces, but unless you communicate, it's going to be pretty difficult. So this is where, this is what usually happens. But if you have a certain grade goal, use your assertiveness and use your, your open communication and your eye language to tell your professor. So again, I versus you, getting to know your professor and make a, a connection on the first day. And also, once you get into that class, letting your professor know nice and early what your grade goals are. Your professor will have a heck of a lot more respect for you. You will more likely have a very a much more enriching and engaging and fulfilling experience for yourself. And better yet, you stand to get far better grades. Thank you so much. I just want to say I've heard, um, I'm part of Phi Theta Kappa, uh -huh. I've heard a lot about it's important to talk to your professors, la la la. Yeah. I've never heard it from a professor, and that means a lot. I just Thank thought you. you should know. Well, I have a blog called The Chatty Professor, which is giving this type of advice all the time. Oh, so, that is wonderful. Yes. But, well, that's why I'm doing this, because I feel that students, they don't know, and they don't hear it enough from us. And it's important for them to hear it enough, because we are partners in this experience. We are partners of Team U, and that's what we're here for. And I feel that. You know, a lot of it rests on the student side of things that students may not be aware of. And the other thing is, just one last little tidbit, is that, and this was another cool activity that I, but usually these presentations are much longer, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So, is that, you know, having you guys look at, like, what's your communication composition right now? I'm suspecting it's in a lot of pads, iPads, keypads, it's a lot of this. <laughs> and in college, it's a lot of this. How does an A student feel with a professor who says, I think that that is one of those, that that's a big problem. That's a big problem. Number one, a professor should, it is not about what, a professor doesn't give out A's. You should always have access to samples of what A work looks like, a rubric, an evaluation, something. And I'm going to go out on a limb here, but I really believe in this, that if those things are not available to you, and if the person can't even tell you what, you know, what crazy, you know, sky-high ladder you can climb to get there, there, that's a problem. And I, that's an instance where I say there is a chain of command at colleges. You don't go to the college president, which is what some people done, or to the HR director, but that person should be able to give you some samples and tell you what, any more context into, I don't give it, is what is, Yeah. You don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. Yeah, it's fine. I've heard stuff like that. Yeah, the, like that too. That you know, uh, not not I don't give out A's, but um, you know, it's it's almost impossible to get an A in this class. I mean, you really have to be you know way above. You know, just kind so of. So show yeah. me what that. Sh what is show me yeah. what what does that work look like, Professor? I I really I'm willing to jump up to that. What does that work look like? If they still can't do that, that that's a self ad then this is where the flip side of what I'm talking about, this is a self-advocacy issue where you are an adult, they're an adult, you're partners, and you say, I, you know, that should, if this is not like a game show, this isn't Stump the Student, right? I mean, we have another professor here, this isn't Stump the Student. Yeah, no, I, I think if, if, if any professor ever told you they actually don't give out A's, second conversations with their chairman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. There's a chain. That, there's a chain that, that's, yeah. a, that's a completely inappropriate thing. And the, the idea of asking for examples, I think, is a really good yeah. idea. <coughs> In fact, most of what I'm saying is, you know, going, hey, can you come talk to all my students? <laughs> um, but rubric, even if they don't have examples, rubrics, you know, yeah. they should. There should be something, some criteria that they're grading you on. And if you're willing, you know, I mean, and if someone's telling Serenity Carr, who's got like five hundred thousand dollars in scholarships, and if someone's telling you that, I mean, because I know that, you know, yeah, oh, right. <laughs> That's insane. But yes, there is a chain. There is a chain. I totally. There's a chain of command. And I know that students are scared. But you know what? Like is a bonus in the student-professor relationship. It's a bonus. It is just like if you have a, a real, a, a stellar cancer doctor who doesn't have a good bedside manner. You want, you want the stellar skills. Like is a bonus. You most likely would like us and, and, and likewise, but it's a business relationship. And in a business relationship between two adults, you have to advocate for yourself sometimes and stand, and stand up and use your eye language and, and be really open. And you can even say, 
if, if we can't resolve this issue, I what is my next step? And if that person can't tell you, then like what David said, there is a there's a there's a department chair, there's a division chair there, and you self advocate. And I know that that can be uncomfortable sometimes, but I want to encourage you to do it because it's great great practice for later for when you have to maybe self advocate with your boss. So. I'm so glad you guys. Were